Okay, it is three o'clock. I call the meeting to order. Attendance, Chris? Here. Martha's here. Sue's absent. Before we state to a non public with Kelly. Make a motion to go to a non public session per RSA 91 A colon 3, numeral 2 colon C, reputational risk including tax masters. Matters. Second. Chris? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Martha? Okay. Yes. Mr. Three so I can tell to the answer your question. The next planning board is on the second of May, so not this week. Next That's week. Planning house. Make a motion to open close the non-public meeting. Go back to the regular session. I also make a motion to seal the minutes for the non-public session. Need a second. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we'll make a motion to recess until 4.15. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 3.53. <clears throat> First public input. Anybody? My name is Cynthia Miller and I represent the First Free Will Baptist Church up in Granite. And I've been here before and we know all the problems that have been going on. However, I'd like to know where do we stand because this has been going on too long. Uh, so nothing has changed since the several times we spoke in the recent past. The attorney's working on it with the Department of Revenue Administration. He's had a conference call with the commissioner there, and then most recently, last the week before last, with the chief legal counsel for DRA, and our attorney is drafting a formal letter to uh, request formal permission to grant the abatement. So this is government and legal, so it's about the two slowest processes combined, and you guys are just going to have to be patient, please. I, it's, I, it's, I do understand that, and I have been pretty patient because all my paperwork was on time. I should not have been on that list. I don't, I don't have a response for that. We've beat this up and down, and we're yeah, we working on it for you, everything we can. Yeah. There was one thing that Todd required that wasn't in on time, but I'm not here to debate that with you. There was in the DRA's, the BTLA's letter, they identified something that Todd had required that, that wasn't in on time. So I, let's just move forward and try to get it abated for you. Nothing has changed since the two or three other times that I said okay. I was working on it. At a later date, but, then, can you tell me what was late? Um, sure, I can have it for you by the end of when we leave here tonight. All right. But I believe that the BTLA order that you were provided with your tax return. Um, had that detail in it. If you happen to have it in that folder, we could probably get it right out of there. The tax return, I didn't pay you. The, the tax bill uh -huh. um, was accompanied by the BTLA court order. Yes. So it's in the court order. Perfect. First Free Will Baptist Church, right? Yes. This is the A form, A9 form was late, I believe, from reading it right. April 5th, 2022. It's not due till the 15th. Maybe that one is. No, this one, I'm sorry, Articles of Incorporation is what they said wasn't supplied. Can I see the article? Yep. Those are those are amended bylaws. The articles of incorporation 
We don't, as a church, don't have to have incorporated by, uh, laws. We only have bylaws. Okay. So, again, the BTLA made the order, not the town. The town granted it. So, I don't disagree whether, whether or not you supplied everything or not wasn't the basis of you getting denied. The town approved it. The court overturned it. And we're still trying to ask for an exception from a different legal entity. So, I... Because according to the IRS, those bylaws are legal. We are not incorporated. We are not a 501c3. We do not have to be a 501c3 because we are only a church. We're not a school. We're not a daycare. We're not anything. From the laws of the IRS, all we have to have is the, the bylaw, our bylaws, and the bylaw. I could have had you the so regular bylaws. I'm not debating any of that. The town granted it. The Board of Tax and Land Appeals from Concord overturned that, and we're still trying to get it abated for you. That's, that's the reality and the fact of it. I don't think it's what's not. <laughs> it's not. Okay. Okay. I'm confident our attorney's going to get it done. I wish things with legal and the state were quicker. But again, thought the two most long, lengthy processes that we have are anything state related and anything legal. Mm -hmm. Well, waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and yep. not hearing so, anything is frustrating. You know, maybe a letter should be sent out, maybe something. From I've asked everybody to be patient until they hear. Otherwise, it's a few weeks in government and legal is not very long. We have court cases that are three or four years old at this point. You have my word, we're working on it. I can't do anything. I know you are. I, I, Our I, attorney, we're spending a decent amount of money with the attorney to, to benefit the five organizations that we feel were in, impacted incorrectly and wrongly by the state. That has not changed since the last time I saw you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Any more public input? Go ahead, Justin. Else is good? You guys good? Go ahead. Um, Justin, J.B. Parks and Rec. Uh, I just wanted to come here today um, in front of the board and, and everybody to see. Um, two weeks ago uh, at the New Hampshire uh, Rec and Park Association uh, annual awards ceremony, um, I had the pleasure of presenting the High Five Award um, for outstanding dedication to recs, recreation and parks in the state to the Friends of Constitution Park group. Um, there, there's a few board members here today, so I just wanted to come in front of you guys and make sure everybody knew that they received this honor, and uh, I'm very thankful to have them, and it's much deserved. So I don't know, do you guys want to say anything? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and I, so I want Allison and, and Bob to come up too, if you don't. So yeah, no, I've been here for a while, but Mr. Templeton, I'm not sure. You're aware of it. I know you have. I see your signature on a whole lot of papers. That's so good. So I, what, what I've handed out is a, is a paper with, with our logo, not our logo, but a picture of the park, um, and the board of directors, which I don't think, you know, we've talked about a lot uh, as far as naming them. When I was at the Conservation Commission meeting, one of the fellows said, Who, who's on your board anyway? So... Um, I want to introduce, this is Allison Hayford, she is our secretary, uh, and Christopher Elliott, the others could not be here, Bob is here, oh, <laughs> so Bob isn't officially on the board, but he's sort of de facto, uh, he's our business liaison and has raised most of the money for the park and the disc golf club. Um, Christopher Elliott is our vice chair, uh, Robert Levy is our IT person and has been responsible for our web page and our database and doing all our social media for us. Uh, Alicia Cushing is on the board. She's a, a teacher in the school system. Dwayne Cook, parent. Carolina, and I'm not going to get the last name of her name right. Um, Zorzowski, uh, uh, um, who works at OCC, also be Concerned Citizens, is on the board. Patricia Pastel and Eve Klotz. So we've accomplished an amazing amount of activities, and we're really, really grateful that Justin took the time to recognize that and talk about that at his meeting. Um, in the last year, we resurrected two miles of hiking trails with new signs, maps, and kiosks, designed and installed a nine-hole disc golf course that is on the national UDISC app. We built a 12-foot by 16-foot pavilion with an all-person ADA-compliant path 10-foot picnic table is going to be there within the month. 
Uh, we've developed our website, developed social media and Instagram uh, accounts. We've restored four benches that were donated to us by Osmond Concerned Citizens, and they are placed throughout the park. The Rotary Club donated a free lending library that is in the park. Uh, and they have also received a grant, and they're uh, providing two additional benches that are going to be placed along the pathway this spring. Uh, this spring, summer, into fall, there will be a story walk that is going to be done uh, by the school's out program with the school and the children that will be in the trails. We have uh, collaborated with Green Mountain Conservation, and they are doing nature interpretive trails within our trains, trail system. Uh, the pavilion is going to be stained. Uh, new picnic tables are also going to be going up in the trails. And some landscaping between the pavilion and the playground. There is a new Constitution Park sign that is, I don't know, six feet by three feet, beautifully done uh, by Tim Otterbach, and it's going to be installed by the town, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, they've been, the town has been very cooperative with everything we have done. We are going to be planting a tree in honor of Rick Cogswell, who is really the original designer of the park. Uh, he passed away this, this winter. And we're going to be looking for donations to plant some additional trees for shade as we move along. We're hosting a party in the park on June 24th, along with our Touch a Truck. There will be disc golf demonstrations, pickleball demonstrations, games for the kids, guided nature walks, dog demonstrations, craft fair, and food trucks. That will be from 10 to 1. We hope everybody can come and see what a beautiful park that, that this has all become for us. I want to mention that um, from all of this, we couldn't have done it with all of the amazing time, talent, and money that was donated to the park. There was a total of 3,870 volunteer hours that were given to the work in the park. The monetary and in-kind donations totaled $150,000 to 113. That came from 19 businesses and 70 people at no cost to the taxpayers. So I just wanted to point out that we really are very grateful for all the volunteers. I think we've created a space, a safe space in the park uh, for people of all ages to come and, and enjoy and appreciate. And we thank Justin for acknowledging that for us. Did you want to say anything else? I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> we couldn't do any of this without Allison, who's our secretary and does amazing work as well. So everybody is working very hard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would just like to say that I was over at Constitution Park last week and I was totally amazed at all the improvements that have been done. Yeah. So nice to see the kids having the playground to play on and ball teams were there and it was very nice and thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Any more public input? Okay, we'll go to the business meeting. Have yeah, the Town of Osby check voucher totals for the week ending May 25th. Total payroll was $42,390.68. Counts payable was $107,027.04. The sewer de water department was $2,443.51, and the sewer was $454.81. Total fund payments was $157,441.66. Make a motion to approve these. A second. Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, I have the Sluckman's meeting minutes for April 10th. I make a motion to approve these minutes. A second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have the Sluckman's workshop session for April 10th. Make a motion to approve these minutes. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have a water and sewer department warrant in the amount of $180.38. Make a motion to approve this warrant. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have another water and sewer
water and sewer warrant in the amount of $180.38 and make a motion to approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do the same amount. I have another warrant from the Water and Sewer Department in the amount of $109.88. I make a motion to approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have an application for a new sewer <coughs> service located at 111 Route 16B. Make a motion to approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. An application for water service at the same location, 111 Route 16B. Make a motion to approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a warrant for excavation tax in the amount of $904.82. Make a motion to approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have another warrant for excavation tax in the amount of $10,021.12. Make a motion to approve this warrant. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have a yield tax levy in the amount of sure, $1,500. Make a motion to approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. I have another yield tax levy in the amount of $1,500. Make a motion to approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have an application for current use assessment. Property is located at 1155 Route 16. Make a motion to approve this application. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have a notice of an intent to excavate. The property is located at map 124, lot 25. Total acres is 6.5 plus 181. Make a motion to approve this intent to excavate. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, have a letter from a gentleman. It says, I'm happy to continue serving the taxpayers of the town of Osby in the pursuit of high-speed internet for all and would recommend that you appoint me as the Osby primary voting representative and Matt Trahan as alternate representative to the newly formed communications district. I make a motion to approve, appoint Matt Trahan to this position. Question. I have a second. Yes, can I make a point of clarity? That, that was from me recommending or offering to appoint me as the voting member and Matt uh, Trahan as an alternate. Well, did you even have your name on it, Matt? Mm -hmm. so I thought we already appointed you, so. <laughs> that was to the communications planning committee now at town meeting we passed the warrant article as did all the other towns to create the formation of the communications district so it's a, it, this is actually a brand new entity at this point and actually it does have matt sawyer's name on it i wasn't so. gonna argue with you. <laughs> all right i make a motion to appoint matt to this position second all in favor all right all right okay chris it's up to you I've got uh, some permanent uh, applications for property tax exemptions. I have two veterans here, and uh, these have been reviewed. And I make a motion that we accept these. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's an elderly exemption. Oh, elderly. Yep. Okay. Yep. So then we have. Another permanent application for property tax credits exemptions. Uh, three elderly uh, ones, and I'm 
going to make, these have been reviewed. I make a motion that we accept these three. Uh, do I hear a second on these? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And here I have a selectman's deed. Um, this is, maybe I could put some clarification on uh, It's located here, map 54. Oh, okay. Selectman's deed, map 054, lot 002, sub lot 023. At 25. And this is at 25 Joshua Road in Center Street. Uh, it is. The reason for this deed was because they, the town had taken possession of an old camper that was located up at Scandia. And we're deeding it back to them so that we're not liable for the lot rent up there. That's there you are. So uh, this has been reviewed, hereby reviewed, and I uh, make a motion we accept this. All second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Now we have uh, 2023 MS-232. This is appropriations made by the town, uh, town meeting. Uh, this has been reviewed. This is in the uh, town report. This is also available for review if anyone wishes to see it. Uh, I make a motion we accept this. Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, we have a notice of decision here. Uh, we have a lot. It's from the planning board. It's from the planning board. 285 Newman Drew Road, tax map 016, lot 008. 295 Newman Drew Road, tax map 016, lot 007. And that, what has happened is those have merged. Mm -hmm. These have merged into uh, one lot. Uh, this has been reviewed. I make a motion that... Uh, we don't need to approve we don't need The planning board did that. The planning board did that. Then they've already done that. Okay. Here's another notice of decision, uh, Zoning Board of Adjustment. Uh, 819 Route 16, tax map 279, lot 002. This is, I need, I'd like to be more specific on this, but reading this over, um, can you make a clarification, Madam Chair? Yeah, you can read the case number if you want. <laughs> if you. Okay, I gotcha. Uh, this would be, uh, 819 Route 16, tax map 239, lot 002. Okay. This has been uh, reviewed. Yeah, these are both them. available in the Sluckman's office if anybody wants to review them. Let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, Town of Oscar, New Hampshire, request for clerical abatement. This is. Uh, refund abatement of one hundred and eleven dollars to map one twenty two lot zero one ten sub zero one ten. And the second one would be uh, an abatement uh, again the same thing in uh, the amount of seventeen dollars. I'm just looking for map 029, lot 001, sub 0, uh, pardon me, sub 106. Uh, these uh, have been reviewed and. Okay, okay. The reason for abatement, the Costellos weren't on this site for the 2022 tax season. And this was a camper, right? Yep. And then on this one, they uh, weren't on the site for the same reason. So they got uh, an abatement for that. Okay, they weren't on there for the season. 
So those two abatements were reviewed yeah. and approved. What else do we have here? Uh, notice of decision on 1800 Route 16, tax map 38, lot 020. Um, this is, as I understand it, a pending driveway permit approval. This is already approved by New Hampshire DOT. So this, we've just reviewed that. Well, that'll be for review if anybody wants to yes. look at it. Oh, and one more permanent application for property tax credits exemptions. And this is a veteran. Uh, I like to give uh, tax map 000092, lot 065000. Uh, this has been reviewed, and I make the motion that we uh, accept this one. Second. All favor? Aye. Uh, I believe that's all I have. With your DJ, help. you have anything? Yeah, I want to give an update on uh, Annie Nichols Road. Tuesday after the meeting, the last meeting, we, uh, Neil and I met an uh, engineering company down there, and we looked at it, the bank, Obviously, it needs stabilization right from the river up. We can't do that without permitting or engineering. And But we were able to, with the crew, pull the guardrails back and support the back of the guardrails. Uh, and we can leave cones there until the engineering company puts together some kind of uh, barricade uh, containment there so we can try to keep that road open. We've <clears throat> we were approved to keep it open the way it is right now. And we did have to close it to no through truck traffic because that one spot, when the truck goes through, it's rocking into it. Uh, Neil did cut that out. We're going to take that out. We're going to put gravel in it and compact it real well and then try paving it. And that will kind of keep everything level there for a little while to buy us some time. But I do have one engineering company giving me a proposal for engineering, and then I'm going to have to get a couple more. Um, but that's underway, and that one engineering company that's down there is doing our uh, plan for containment there, which is good news that we can keep it open. It's unfortunate we had to close it to tra truck traffic. Uh, Neil and myself did go around to the <coughs> local truckers that mostly truck on it, and they were fine with it. They were just happy we left it open because once we figured we there was a possible way we could keep it open, we wanted to because, as you guys know, on dump day, that thing's unbelievable busy. I don't know what the future holds for it. Uh, the company that was there said it's in very bad shape. It's all the way down around there that it's, the whole road's giving way. <clears throat> We're going to do what we can do. And until then, I'll keep everybody updated. But as of right now, it's open with no through truck traffic. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. DJ? Uh, Matt? Yeah. Uh, um, I was calling the other <laughs> I'm thrilled to say that uh, after several years and multiple versions of committees and, and whatnot, we have true high-speed internet coming hopefully to everywhere in town. Uh, it started with the Carroll County Communications or Broadband Committee before I was here and then the Communications District Planning Committee that you referenced, Martha, and now these towns formally joined, um, most of which last month with uh, town meeting passing more articles. and. That was helpful in getting charter communications. Um, I'm sorry, consolidated communications has a new business line called Fidium, which is fiber optic and is extremely high speed. And they won some grant money, and they're going to be rolling out. So it's very important if you don't have high speed in your area, or you have uh, some options, but it's not great. Um, go to the ospe.org website, and there's a link to the Fidium sign-up page, and pre-order your service because I believe they're going to um, they're going to roll out in the order that makes the most business sense for them. But certainly, by showing a strong demand in an area, is likely to, to get them to come because there's like 13 towns in the communications district. So, if you and please spread the word to your neighbors and people in other parts of town that are underserved or not served, go sign up for. Um, for service now ahead of time. You don't have to pay anything now, but sign up saying you're going to be a customer, and then hopefully they'll do our parts of town first. 
That's it. Okay, I'll open up the second public input. Uh, it has to do with broadband district. Uh, I thought we would already sign an agreement with Fidium before we even started the broadband district. We haven't really signed anything with Fidium. We've got, I penned a letter in support of them getting grant money if it brought high speed here. We didn't have an agreement already before we started. The there, there district. even now there is no fa written franchise agreement or anything. They were going after the grant money around the same time as the formation of the district. They were coming to the the planning meetings for the district. Uh, so. I know, I know your objection at town meeting to join it was we don't really need it now, and I, I understand that objection. The town overwhelmingly voted to join anyway. I don't know if other providers will come in in the future potentially and reduce the monopoly or oligopoly in, in, in that way, help the costs get lower. I mean, who, who knows? What the well, my other is. understanding was that this was not going to be any monetary expense with this, and I understand that they've decided to uh, start their own treasury with the $15,000 that's left over from the ARPA money that they got for the committee. They got $30,000 for the committee. They got 15000 left over from the committee that they're going to start a treasury for this new district. This is bureaucracy. Watch it happen. Everybody, mark my words. This is not going to be good for anybody, so this district. Ho ho hopefully that doesn't happen in terms of creating. So I know specifically your questions were the same as mine a few several months ago. Can the... Can the entity of the corporation, or the in that case, it's not it's like a municipal corporation, it's a village district, uh, I'm sorry, communications district, can it borrow, can it create debt, can it shift tax liability or tax burden? Because it, that was kind of conflicting in the original bylaws, and a lot of us caught it. The version that came out and was approved by the Attorney General's office right before town meeting removed any of those possible conflicting clauses and it's overwhelmingly clear they can't do anything that will create tax burden. They can't issue revenue bonds. They can't. So I, I don't think any, any in a, money from, from ARPA is tax burden. Yeah, I mean that that it's money already is. tax burden. It's tax money. And so it's it's that's a mute point. They're, they're already doing it. So what do we do? We go back and say, hey, you're breaking the law. If the attorney general just said that, that they're not allowed to do it. No, they, they're not allowed to create tax. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm really, gonna, gonna, it, 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 that, that was grant a, money, and I don't the town got it. Well. The state got money. Your county got it. Everybody got it. I wanted to bring it up on the money. I understand. I know what everybody wants it, but we will see. I get what you It all comes from us in the end. <laughs> Uh, I just want to say a couple things about that, and I don't know if you've got it back up again. I'm not sure if the motion was actually. Um, made properly even in the end that it, it was to appoint Matt and then and not Matt to appoint <laughs> to uh, to appoint Matt Sawyer Matt, Matt Sawyer and Matt then Trahan. Matt Trahan as the altern alternate. Yeah. But I, I wanna say I, I think it's the best thing that's happened. There's there's too many people in this community in this area that have no way of, of communicating with anybody and they're very, very isolated. And my opinion is, is that ARPA money is already our tax money. It's, it's our money <laughs> that we have put into the federal government. So it's not, it's not the double dipping of it. It's actually coming back to us. So I, I appreciate all the work that, that you've done. And um, I'm happy to hear that it's coming to Ossipi. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, our next meeting will be held on May 8th. And with that, you have anything, Chris? Nothing new. I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. 447.